everyone, welcome back. This week I am going to be moving into a period that I have never done before, and that is the American Civil War. Uh, it's a period that I get a lot of requests for. Uh, specifically, people keep asking me how to paint a Confederate soldier, so that is what I'm going to be doing today. Now, here is the figure that we're going to be using. This is from a Perry Plastics box set that they released. It's a great value for money. Uh, you get a whole bunch of plastic um, Confederate soldiers, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, if you want to start your army out really fast, this is a great way to do it. I picked this box up at Salute. Now, it does have a few drawbacks. There's not a lot of variety. Um, there are a lot of sprues that are all very similar. There's two command sprues, but yeah, it's not a very varied box. Uh, the bodies and heads are all one thing, so you can't sort of change faces around. You can customize the arms, though, to make it look like the figure is either marching or charging. There's a little variance in that, and you get a variety of different hats that you can put on people. So that does uh, spice things up a little bit, but I probably, if you want a nice um, sort of yeah, varied army. I recommend that you supplement these with some metal figures that have more, you know, more unusual poses or more expressive, more personality, just so that, you, you know, you get a little, something a little bit more interesting. That's always what I would say. That's the thing with plastic sets. Most of them are a great, cheap way to start an army with very little investment, but, you know, when it comes to, you know, making something that looks really unique, with a lot of, you know, with interesting details, you know, I think the best way is, you know, you can maybe use a plastic box for your core army, but then you probably want to mix in some more interesting metal figures just, you know, to keep things, you know, yeah, well, to keep things from getting too monotonous. And this is actually a good one since the Perrys have a metal range for the Civil War as well, so it's easy to buy figures that are the same scale and in the same style if you're a stickler for that kind of thing. Now, Confederates, I think people want to see these because uh, I think people maybe struggle with the idea that there's so much, you know, inconsistency. There's a lot of different uh, uniforms being worn, but a lot of different pieces of clothing, especially towards the end of the war when supplies were a problem for the Confederacy. You were seeing all sorts of homespun things being mixed in with uniform elements, so they're really irregular in how they dress. It's much easier to paint a Union soldier, by and large, because you're just painting everybody just sort of in those blue uniforms for the most part, and that's, that's very simple. The Confederates, there's, it's more challenging because you have to come up with different clothing, different combinations, maybe even some patterns, because they sometimes were just wearing whatever they had. So I think some people find that more difficult. I personally enjoy it because I like the variants. I get really bored painting an army where everybody is exactly the same with all with just nothing to distinguish them because, you know, for that just makes it into a chore. So personally, I like this, but I can see how a lot of people are frustrated by it and don't know what to do. So anyway, I'm going to be going over a pretty, you know, this is a pretty basic Confederate soldier, but it should give you some ideas about how you can generally approach this particular unit in your armies. I'm going to start out here on the pants, and they're going to be painted in the famous butternut shade that was very common in um, Confederate uniforms. And this is kind of a unique shade. Um, actually, Foundry makes a triad that's very close to the color called Butter Fudge, but I want to adapt it just a little bit because it's not quite what I want. So I've taken basically the Butter Fudge color and I've added a little gray to it. So this is Butter Fudge shade with a bit of charcoal gray light mixed into it just to make it a grayer, cooler color, and that's the base coat for the pants. I'm then going to apply a really generous Agrox Earthshade wash all over the pants to help darken down the creases a bit. And now to start highlighting. I am going to begin here with the uh, Butterfudge medium uh, color and I've once again mixed some gray into that. In this case I have mixed in a little tiny bit of that charcoal gray like but it's a very dark color and I don't want it to you know darken down my highlight color too much but I have instead mixed um, a bit of arctic gray shade in here. That's a much lighter gray color so I'm still getting kind of that grayish cast to uh, my highlight without, um, you know, really 
making the color feel too dark overall and I'm going to apply this pretty generously. I've thinned the paint down quite a bit and I'm blending it out a bit because I don't want any really dark, dark creases on these pans. Uh, don't feel too bad if the color you make doesn't exactly match mine. The beauty of painting these Confederate soldiers is there was a huge amount of inconsistency in the colors of their uniforms. The the dye lots that they use in these uniforms, especially towards the end of the war when the supplies were not, uh, supply chain was not very good. It was all wildly inconsistent. So there was a whole, even within one unit, you'd get a whole bunch of different shades of brown that just varied all over the place. So you can even, within a unit, you can consider painting uh, different soldiers, basically, in slightly different colored pants and, or tops or whatever you're going to make this butternut color and it'll be perfectly okay to do that. I'm going to continue the highlighting process now with the uh, Butterfudge light color and once again I mix that Arctic gray shade, the kind of light gray color into it to get it a little cooler and you know not quite such a warm brown though you can see being the color that it is it's still pretty warm and I'm gonna and, and this is sort of now sort of my third highlight so you can see I'm really applying it really focusing on the tops of creases and on areas where light would be hitting sort of to emphasize you know the parts that need to show up on the on the figures pans Now the final final highlight on the pants I'm going to make by taking that color I already had, so the butterfudge light with that gray mixed into it, and I'm going to lighten it even further with some bone yarn medium this time. And this is really going to go on all the extreme creases and around the cuffs at the bottom of the pants, the knees, every really the areas that I really really want to be light. And this should be applied rather sparingly and blended out quite a bit because you know you don't want these pants to get too light. You want the high contrast, so that's why we're using this color. I'm gonna then, once I've done that, I'm gonna lighten it even further with a little bit of Boneyard Light mixed in, and that's gonna really, really be only an edge highlight for sort of putting around the cuffs, some really sharp creases, and on the knees, but that really, you need to really, really don't use very much of that because you don't want these pants to feel too, too washed out looking. I mean, you want some areas to be quite light because they would have gotten faded from a lot of wear and tear but don't overdo it because you know what makes your miniatures look good is that you have this you have a really high contrast in different elements Now I'm going to work on his jacket, and I could have done this in butternut as well, but I opted to go for the classic confederate gray because I like having different elements and contrast. And this is another thing like with the pants, there's a lot of different color variants, a lot of dye lots, the colors ranged all over the place, dark, light, blue, all different colors, but I have opted here, I want to make a sort of a complex gray shade. So for my base, I have taken the charcoal gray uh, light color. I have mixed in a little deep blue light and then I've also had some of the butter fudge shade to it. So that's, it's a really kind of interesting kind of warm blue gray all at once. And that's gonna be my base color for the uniform jacket. And when that's done, I'm going to apply a really quick, uh, fairly heavy wash of Nuln oil everywhere just to darken down in all of the creases. Now my medium highlight color on the jacket is going to be a mixture of uh, foundry stone medium and once again like with the base color I've mixed in some other tones you know just to you know for consistency so I put that butter fudge shade color in this gray just as well not very much because I don't want it to get too brown and I have also added in some of the deep blue light both of those just a touch but they give a, a very distinct cast to the gray and that's something to consider with uh, these gray jackets whatever shade you choose you don't have to do like me uh, there's a lot of variants but consider giving it your gray a distinct tone because 
you know, there, there was a lot, as I said, there's a lot of variance in how these things were, were dyed, so it'll make your unit more interesting, especially if you mix up the shades of gray that people are wearing. I've seen some really pretty, almost blue colors, as a matter of fact, very blue grays. That would be also very attractive and something that I might give a try if I painted another one of these figures. And you can see I'm just applying this medium color pretty much all over the jacket, blending it out a bit, mostly just avoiding all of the fine creases and folds on his sleeves and on his, you know, around the uh, the tops of his, you know, collar. And also don't forget to paint his hat. Uh, you could do his hat in another shade, but this cappy cap, I think, was often, if they were wearing one, it was often the sort of that, that a gray color. So that is what I'm going to be making mine here. Uh, for my third highlight color, I'm going to continue. This time I'm using Arctic Gray Shade with the Butter Fudge and that blue mixed into it again as I did before. And you can see I'm applying it only to areas where I want there to really appear a lot of light to be. So on, you know, especially on the tops of his sleeves and all of the folds and definitely a lot on his hat because he's got sort of a edging along the top and there's folds there so uh, you know just to emphasize the areas where light would be hitting or where you would think there would be a lot of wear you know basically occurring on the figure's jacket Now I'm going to finish up the jacket and hat with just a little bit of edge highlight. I've just taken that color I used in the last step and I've mixed some white into it just to lighten it even further and I'm going to apply this around the top edge of the hat or sort of around where there would be seams or at his sleeves, around the top of his collar, on some very sharp creases, those kinds of things, on his elbows where there'd be a lot of wear to the fabric. So, but very, just a few, a very few spots just where I want, you know, extra contrast and you know well to, to really have this extra this extra pop of color basically and next I'm going to very quickly paint his um, canteen strap and the the strap also on his rifle or musket, I'm not sure exactly in this case. Um, and I am going to be making those white. So first I wanna base coat those areas and I'm gonna use the stone medium color that I already had out for that purpose. Once I've got the base coat on, I'm then going to take the Arctic gray shade as my second layer on those areas. And then finally I'm going to finish up with just white and that should be the main color because these straps do want to look white so you can apply it quite generously here. One thing with this figure, uh, because of how he's posed with the gun out in front, you have to really be careful when you're painting sort of his chest area and stuff because there are certain areas that are just not very accessible. The good news is you don't really have to spend a lot of time highlighting those areas because they're not exposed, they're kind of in the shade, but at the same time you do want to paint them a little bit. So uh, take your time with those areas, be careful, and you know, try not to you know, get paint everywhere. I kind of did in a couple cases, and I had to do quite a few, bit, a few times, go back and touch things up because I kind of, it's really hard to get down those cracks kind of under his arms and around his chest area. One reason I chose this as a model that wearing a bedroll is because it presents a great opportunity to integrate some pattern or color, or t you know, into your model. Um, I'm not actually going to be doing pattern this time, but I am definitely going to be getting some color into the figure this way because it's otherwise such a neutral kind of gray-brown figure, and this is a really great way to add this sort of sort of pop of color. So I've decided to make the bedroll red here. Uh, there's actually an example in the Perry uh, Plastics um, illustrations of a red bedroll, and I'm going to be emulating that. So I'm base coating the whole thing using the Vallejo Black Red to start out with. Then 
then I'm going to continue highlighting the bedroll uh, using my favorite Citadel red shades. So I'm starting out with uh, Mephiston red, which is a Citadel base color, and I'm applying it fairly thinly and transparently and blending it out. And I'll go back over the bedroll a couple of times on areas where I want, you know, brighter color and build it up. And, but still leave a lot of that really dark, uh, black red showing underneath because it, it, you get a wonderful contrast and, you know, really great variance between the bright red and the deep red of the base. With the um, Fist on Red on, I'm going to highlight further, but this time with uh, Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet, which is a very bright red and a layer color, and I'm going to apply that more on folds and creases and really where I want it to look like light is hitting on the figure. And I really love working with these reds. They're a joy to use. They, they, they go on so smoothly. Uh, they're a little bit transparent, but they give this wonderful sort of rich, deep effect. Um, I find them really, just really easy to use, so I highly recommend them. I'm going to finish off the uh, blanket with an edge highlight around the bottom, just sort of where, just to, to sort of imitate a little bit of fading or wear like you'd expect in those locations. And I'm just taking the Evil Sun Scarlet and mixing a little Boneyard Medium in to create that edge highlight color, that fading around the bottom of the blanket. And that you can apply quite just very a very small a bit, a amount to those areas. Then I'm going to add some uh, blue stripes to the blanket, sort of regular intervals, which was something that I saw in the example picture that I was looking at in the plastics box set. I am using uh, foundry French blue for this, the triad, so it's very simple. Just paint carefully paint the stripes on in the shade color and then just uh, very lightly highlight with both the medium and light color. And I like this because it just adds a little bit of extra detail and interest to the blanket so it's just not flat red. It looks like there's a little bit of pattern but you're not doing a lot of work. I'm then going to use that same French blue triad to paint his socks because I like the idea of incorporating another color into the model but I, and I like the idea of this sort of dark, dark, really deep rich blue color it, it goes it's very complementary i think to the neutral brown and gray color and it, i think it makes the whole thing you know it just it's very it sort of unifies the uh, whole figure very nicely so i'm going to continue and highlight those socks in the same way it's, you can do it very quickly just apply the medium and light colors sort of to the tops of the folds and creases of those socks Then I'm going to quickly paint the black areas, or sort of gray-black areas on this figure, which include his um, ammo bag, his patch bag, whatever, uh, the brim and strap on the front of his hat as well, and also his belt, which you can't really see very well, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm base coating all those areas first with black, and then I'm going to start highlighting them first with a mix of the black and um, foundry charcoal gray medium, then just pure charcoal gray, and then finally I'm going to finish that up with a high highlight of stone medium, which I'm going to, especially on the, on the ammo bag, I'm going to apply to the edges and sort of blend out in order to get sort of a shiny leather effect. And on the hat, the same idea, you just want to apply it sort of as an edge highlight around the brim and the top of the strap at the front of his hat so that you get this look of sort of of shiny leather that the light is really glinting off of those areas of the uniform. I'm going to move on and work on the brown leather areas on this figure, which I'm going to make be his uh, boots or his shoes, and then also his bayonet scabbard. I am using my typical leather painting technique for this, so I'm going to base coat these areas with uh, Vallejo German Camouflage Black Brown. I'm then going to apply a generous highlight of um, Bay Brown Medium, and then follow it by uh, gently sort of highlighting the edges first with chestnut shade and then very very lightly and subtly with chestnut medium. I've discussed this a lot in my earlier videos so I suggest you look back at some of them if you want a more uh, detailed description of the process. 
uh, once I'm done with that, I'm gonna tone both of the areas back a little bit because I said maybe they were just they were the brown was just too um, pronounced for the rest of the uniform. I didn't I didn't want it to be that brown. I wanted more black or sort of coolness to it. So I uh, then I'm going to go ahead and take those shoes and also the scabbard and apply a, a non oil wash to them and that'll and it'll keep the browns will stay there but they won't be quite so bright and quite so you know worn and you know they, they won't have such a light brown leather look it'll be a little bit deeper and more muted I'm then going to paint the stock of his gun and it actually involves using very similar colors to what I just applied to the boots, though this time I'm going to base coat it using Bay Brown shade and then I'm going to apply highlights of the chestnut shade and chestnut medium just like I use in the shoes but the difference here is I'm applying the colors a lot more liberally especially the chestnut shade I'm going to apply it pretty heavily so I get a much lighter effect there and I'm going to sort of blend it a lot more but definitely just apply it thicker heavier so that you know it gives an overall different effect from what I put on the boots the uh, chestnut medium is going to be serving sort of as an edge highlight like, uh, along the sort of the edge of the wood areas um, and I'm going to apply a lot less of that but even so much more than I put onto the boots because I want it to be a stronger sort of redder richer color on the gun stock here Now I'm working on the metallic areas. I'm starting with the steel or sort of shiny steel tin colored areas, which include the um, gun hardware, the bayonet, the barrel, those areas, and also uh, the top of his bayonet scabbard and also his water canteen. Now you could do this a lot of different ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, metal. Uh, they used metal canteens, they used wood canteens sometimes, or they used metal ones with a leather cover over them. So you have quite a few options here, but I decided to go for the metal canteen uh, partially because of the shape of it. It didn't seem to have the same structure as you'd expect from a wooden canteen. Exactly, that would have had more of a barrel construction than this did, so you know it seemed more logical. And also because I like the idea of having metal here. So I'm base coating all of these areas in a mixture of black and Vallejo Air gun metal. Obviously the base coat should have a lot more black and not very much gun metal. Uh, I'm then going to take just pure gun metal and I'm going to highlight all these areas and kind of blend it out. Um, now in the gun barrel itself, you should not highlight it very much because you want that to be quite dark. People often make the mistake on guns of highlighting the barrel particularly too much. You can make like the bayonet for example much shinier and some of the areas he would have handled a lot, but don't go overboard on the barrel itself. I'm uh, then going to take a little bit of Vallejo Silver or Vallejo Air Silver and I'm going to highlight even further but like I said you know only use this on areas like the, the edge of the bayonet, hit the sort of the, the um, percussion lock on his gun and maybe as an edge highlight on the uh, on the sort of the water canteen but you know don't don't make it too shiny don't exaggerate it too far because that's just not it, it doesn't look quite natural. There are also a couple of really small brass areas, which include the buttons on his hat, on the front of his coat, and also his belt buckle. But those areas, the latter two especially, don't show very much. So you can be very quick about this. I'm taking a mix of the cam of the German camouflage black brown and some uh, Vallejo Air gold and base coating those areas, and then very quickly highlighting them with just pure gold. But you can do that just very briefly. The last detail I want to take care of is hair because I didn't do it earlier and I'm just going to use some of the colors I already have out, which is what I often do with hair. Um, I'm base coating the hair using the uh, chestnut shade color and then I'm going to take the chestnut medium color and use that to sort of highlight the tops of the hair strands and where and just sort of towards the top of the hair area. Uh, then I'm going to because and then that kind of results in a very red-headed sort of guy and I, I don't you know redheads aren't that common and I don't and it looks a little cartoonish I don't want that so I'm going to tone it back after I've done this and also help differentiate the strands of hair by giving 
there's that area a pretty heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade, which will make it a little bit duller and a lot browner. And this is our uh, finished Confederate soldier. Uh, there were no real kind of revolutionary techniques covered in this video. It's nothing we haven't done before. It's a very simple figure. It should be quite easy to paint and probably it's a good if you don't have a lot of experience here. Uh, the, the trick I think with these guys to making them look good is having a lot of variation in the different soldiers in a big unit. So you may want to have some of them wearing all gray, some of them wearing all brown, or a mix of the gray and brown, you know, so very, you know, either the pants or the jackets could be brown, so you can mix all of that up in some proportion. Like I said, feel free to play with different shades because the dye colors varied really wildly, and especially if you're doing later war um, Confederates. The earlier ones obviously had better uniforms, everything was neater, it was more consistent, but later on you can really just go crazy, and you can even choose to give them civilian uh, pans, for example, or, you know, in colors that are different colors entirely, just because they would have, you know, at that point been wearing whatever they could get their hands on, and it just wasn't as, as consistent. Uh, and also, you know, this, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, look for ways to add personality and detail to individual units, even if it's a otherwise a basic figure, like choosing to give him a bright colored blanket, adding a small decorative element to it. Um, another thing you might consider is on his water tin, maybe painting some initials or a logo or something like that. Just, you know, small things that don't take very much time, but add personality and individuality to your figure. Uh, so, once again, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, uh, share it with your friends, um, uh, and subscribe to my channel, too. I really appreciate when you do that. And also, I want to hear your comments, if you what you liked about this, what you didn't like, and I also want more suggestions. I haven't been getting as many suggestions for new videos recently, so I do really want to hear what you, what you guys would like to see, what would be useful to you. So, you know, please tell me and uh, let me know. I do have some more things planned that I want to do, but I also want to, you know, do more of these user requests because I know they do help people out. So uh, that's all for now, and I will see you next time.